Jai Hind, welcome to Bio Affairs. As the title suggests, today I'll be talking about viable but non-culturable VVNC cells and persister cells. What are they? What are the difference between them? And how you can recognize them? So it's a very important topic in microbiology syllabus, whether you're a clinical or non-clinical uh, student. So let's dig in. So we know that a bacteria can grow according to their nutrition requirement in either natural environment or in laboratory. In natural environment or for some reason if their growth is arrested. Now growth arrest can be happened uh, due to several reasons like depletion of nutrition or adverse condition. In laboratory also you can do that to implement the VBNC state in a bacterial cell. So in a natural environment or in a laboratory state, in both the places, you can find some VVNC bacterial cells, that is viable but non-culturable cells. So this term is applicable to bacteria, archaea, okay, and this both the terms are very important. Now, after a long and extended time of growth arrest, cells may enter a state termed viable but non-culturable state. In this state, their ability to grow is critically dependent on the conditions used to revive them. Okay, so once the appropriate conditions are available, like a change in the temperature or passage through an animal, so different organisms or different bacteria or archaea have different requirements, then the VVNC microbes resume growth. Okay, but the main concern is VVNC microorganisms could pose a public health threat as many assays that taste food and drinking water are culture based because whatever food and drinking water we are tasting, we are culturing them, them in the laboratory and finding the or recognizing the exact pathogen responsible for the disease or the outbreak or anything. But in VVNC state, it is difficult to identify an organism. Because as the name suggests, they are viable, they are maintaining their living, but they cannot be cultured in regular media, which we know in the labs. Okay. Now, VBNC cells can be directly identified under the microscope, though the regular gram stain or other strains may help, but it cannot be 100% confirmatory test. So, VBNC test... Uh, VVNC cells can also be recognized next to flow cytometry where viable mm. but non-culturable cells can easily be identified and some viability quantitative polymerase chain reaction. Those are specialized polymerase chain reactions and quantitative in nature so that you can real time assess the VVNC bacteria in a particular sample. Now coming to persister cells. So when a bacteria or RK cell is growing in favorable condition, that time some cells become persisters. Now what are persisters? Persisters are growth arrested cells identified by their ability to survive exposure to an antibiotic. Multiple antibiotics may be applied even though they do not harbor antibiotic resistance. So try to understand the persister cells do not contain any antibiotic resistance gene but they can show antibiotic resistance this much capability they have so persister term is mainly used against antibiotic tolerant strains that is why i am giving you an example of antibiotics so antibiotic tolerant persisters are prominent threat in case of medical treatment now, persisters are of considerable interest for several reasons, including their pot potential to cause recurrent infections after antibiotic treatment. Okay, so you can imagine the situation where in your body there is a non growing cell. Okay, the target of an antibiotic maybe is unavailable 
or inactive or would be unaffected by the antibiotic so the cell is totally resistant to the antibiotic or regimen of antibiotics which is used using which has been used by your doctor in your body and now these persistent cells will become active at some point and shows its pathogenicity or will show its pathogenicity and then nothing can be done so two major questions about persistent formation are when the persistence form and how it occurs now there are several evidence also by supporting the facts that the first reason will be a small subsets of cells in a population of growing cells spontaneously become persistent cells even when there is a no stress i already told you no stress nothing available nutrients available environment optimal conditions persistent cells can form so it is a kind, some kind of bacterial i can i don't know but bacterial immunity or bacterial sixth sense you can say the persistence can be thought of as a population attempt to prepare for future possible starvation conditions so some of the cells become ready for the future adverse condition that is nature another reason is the that evidence that persistence arise in response to various triggers without any trigger generally they do not develop so first one is without any trigger and for second one is the with the help of a trigger so what is the trigger with the starvation probably being the most important trigger so the starvation in a bacterial cell is the most important reason for creating a persister whether spontaneous or induced in both these cases a toxin antitoxin module and ppgpp are currently thought to play a role in persister formation so the two molecular facts that produce this or that make this persister cells are toxin and toxin modules ta modules and pp gpp which is also a stress alarm you can say now this ta modules consist of an internal non secreted toxin and a cognate antitoxin that protects the toxin producing cell try to understand this in a single cell suppose a e coli a single cell e coli cell a producing a toxin and an antitoxin both that protects the toxin producing cell the toxin when functioning disrupt the normal cellular function causing growth arrest and the persistent phenotype so try to understand within a cell there is a toxin there is a antitoxin now this toxin is disrupting the normal cellular functions to become the cell a persistent cell means i am making myself so resistant with the help of a chemical and another is antitoxin which is Uh, resisting the toxin from creating a irreparable damage so first one is this is the molecular factor second one is the pp gpp so the pp gpp is thought to set into motion destruction of the antitoxin of a ta module thus releasing the toxin to attack its cellular target and it causes the growth to cease and convert the cell into a persister so here pp gpp and ta module both are engaged to make a cell a persistent cell so if my lectures really made your concept clear and really helped you in your studies please give a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss highly informative content from bioaffairs